Hey there, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell and R3 Stem Cell International. Today I'm going to go through all you need to know about stem cell therapy in Mexico. So what I'm going to cover includes what makes procedures internationally different than within the USA. What kind of biologics are used? Where do they come from? How do they work? Will stem cells internationally be a, a cure for your condition? Do the numbers of stem cells matter for treatment, or is that a myth? What kind of outcome can I expect? For how long will it last? What are the risks and side effects? And how do we come up with our pricing compared to others you know, in the Mexico country? So I started R3 Stem Cell 10 years ago. Uh, we've been in Mexico now going on four and a half years. Um, we w have won a lot of awards over the last few years. Um, I was just on this magazine cover. Um, so with 17,000 procedures under our belt, so to speak, globally, um, you know, we know a lot about the industry, about the competitors. We make sure that we remain at the top of the game. Um, so we have clinics in Tijuana and Cancun. Mexico City is now under construction. Uh, we treat over 70 conditions. We've never had a significant adverse event worldwide, and we stay on the cutting edge of regenerative cellular technology. We know there's a lot to consider. It's relatively new technology, even though we're talking about, you know, a couple decades now. Patient education is key to helping you make, you know, appropriate healthcare decisions for you and your loved ones. And not only is the education key, but accurate facts are important. So what makes international stem cell procedures different? Well, there is no FDA. The FDA in the United States only, you know, regulates domestically. They don't go outside the borders. So it is good in a sense that it's less restrictive. You know, you're not bound by the FDA's um, complete set of uh, federal regulations. However, that can be bad because there can be some bad actors who are not keeping their quality assurance and quality controls up to what they should be. Now, with any new technology, commercialization typically gets ahead of clinical trials. Those clinical trials can take upwards of a decade. Um, so that's where we are with stem cell therapy. With the biologics, uh, the differences in Mexico is that you are allowed to culture the biologics and the stem cells. Um, you can use you know, bioreactor and incubators and things like that. Um, that consists of maximal manipulation uh, category here in the United States. Uh, there's a lot, there's different options of how you can apply the stem cells. Um, the FDA in the United States uses a risk tier approach. Um, so we've never done intraocular around the world. Um, that's a fairly high risk type of thing. We've never done that. Intrathecal has been very safe. We do that routinely in Mexico. It's frowned upon here in the United States. Um, and we do the typical injection, intravenous, nebulizer. As far as conditions go, the rule is in the United States is that you have to, you know, have completed a clinical trial <clears throat> and a, approval, you know, to market for a specific condition if it's considered a drug. So, therefore, in the U.S., you can't do that. Um, <clears throat> so, in, the, in Mexico, they're not, uh, they don't have those types of regulations. Pricing could be higher or lower um, than the United States. So, and there's some caveats with that, which we'll go through. What kind of biologics are used? Well, I can't speak for other entities. Um, I know that we use umbilical cord tissue uh, specifically from the Wharton's jelly part of the umbilical cord. I'll show you that in a second. Why? Well, you know, over 10 years of doing these procedures, we found that umbilical cord tissue stem cells are exponentially more active than those from bone marrow or your own adipose tissue. So five years ago, we basically switched to using those only. Um, and then a few years ago, we added in stem cell exosomes. I'll show you what those are. Uh, they are byproducts of stem cells. They're very, very active in cell-to-cell -cell communication and um, active in facilitating repair and regeneration of areas of the body. Um, 
with allogeneic, meaning it comes from a donor. We've never seen a rejection reaction. I'll talk about the quality assurance with the uh, communicable disease testing. Um, and as I mentioned, the umbilical cord tissue not only has an amazing amount of mesenchymal stem cells, but they're very active. So let's get into this. Uh, why umbilical cord stem cells? Well, first of all, here's an umbilical cord cross-section. All right, you have two arteries and a vein. Those are removed during the processing. This area in flesh color is the uh, Wharton's jelly, named after Dr. Wharton in the 1600s. But it's a gelatinous matrix within the umbilical cord that contains a tremendous amount of stem cells, growth factors, cytokines, exosomes. Um, so that's predominantly the area that we're talking about when we um, use these biologics, okay? So they're very active mesenchymal stem cells in the umbilical cord. We do not use embryonic stem cells. Those are the ones that come from aborted fetuses. We've never done that. We culture the Wharton's jelly stem cells in a clean room that is CGMP compliant, ISO certified. Um, we keep the culturing to the third generation or less. So <clears throat> whenever you go through a generation, it's usually okay up until about the fifth or sixth generation. And then the potential for um, mutations and other issues that make them less active occurs. So we keep them to half of that, the third generation or less, to make sure they remain very active and potent. We do not use a preservative. We don't cryopreserve our stem cells in Mexico at all. Uh, when you use cryopreservative, uh, there's a couple different potential issues. One is cell death. Cryopreservation uh, causes about 20% of the cells to die. Um, so, you know, 80% still remain um, viable, and that's great. But, you know, we get 95%, 98% viability um, by not cryopreserving. Um, the other issue is that the preservative that uh, is used by other centers is DMSO, which has sulfa in it. So you could, in theory, get a sulfa allergy reaction. Our lab is COFAPRIS certified. You may have heard of COFAPRIS. It's the counterpart to the FDA in Mexico. Um, while not as strict as the FDA, we are certified by them. We do maintain FDA quality assurance standards. All right, so I just want to show this slide of what happens to one's bone marrow mesenchymal stem cells over time. So this is just one reason we don't use those anymore. Uh, when you're born, one in 10,000 stem cells in your bone marrow is a stem cell. And you can see that in green, that's not bad. But as we age, it decreases dramatically. You can see what happens by the age of 30, it goes down 25 times. By the age of 50, it's down 40 fold. And by the age of 60, it's down 200-fold, which is over a 90% reduction. And it doesn't make any sense for individuals to have a bone marrow stem cell procedure um, anywhere these days. So one of the reasons we use exosomes is a few years ago when the research started coming out and we started using them, we found that they improve outcomes when we use them with stem cells, you know, or even by themselves. So on the right here, you can see uh, a stem cell or half of a stem cell, um, and they produce exosomes inside uh, themselves. They are uh, really like uh, lipid uh, covered, so they're kind of like bubbles. And within them, the exosomes contain what you see on the right here, micro and messenger RNA, DNA, cytokines, growth factors. So they get extravasated by cells, and it's not just stem cells, although that's what we used. I mean, you can even find exosomes um, as secretions from breast milk, semen, all kinds of different areas uh, in humans secrete them. But in this case, we're using umbilical cord uh, stem cell exosomes. So what happens is they get released and then into the surrounding area or the circulation, and they get taken up by cells that are in need. They have receptors. They invaginate the um, exosomes. And then, as you can see down here, these are uh, released into the cell, and they cause uh, reactions at that point, transcription, translation, um, differences in, in metabolic activity. 
So to delve a little deeper into exosomes and why they're so important, I'm just going to describe quickly a study that was done at Stanford about 15 years ago. You can see here um, in the left side where they've spliced together two uh, mice. Uh, it's their circulation that they've spliced together. And basically what they wanted to see is that they put together an old mouse and injured some skeletal muscle in the old mouse, but it had the circulation from a young mouse, what would happen? And they found that the, uh, by, by having it connected to a young mouse, the old mouse um, healed much better than uh, really like a young mouse again. And the question is why? And when they labeled the stem cells to see if those were the ones participating in the repair, the, none of them showed up in the repair. Um, so the theory for the last 15 years is that it's been the exosomes that were facilitating the repair. And uh, that was called the fountain of youth experiment. So when we look at combining exosomes and stem cells for treatment, most other centers do not do this. Um, they should. Uh, is anybody who gets 50 million or more stem cells at our center gets exosomes for free? That's a huge value proposition. It's something that a lot of centers charge a lot of extra for. Um, but if you look at the chart here, this is our theory, okay, that the exosomes provide a quicker improvement and they last um, you know, let's say that's a six-month type of thing. The cells um, start to help slower, and they last a lot longer. So that's the one-two punch. So where do the biologics come from? Well, we have the same type of program in Mexico as we do here in the United States. These are consenting donors after a scheduled C-section who are under the age of 35. They are, although in Mexico we do help them with their prenatal vitamins and uh, um, health uh, with diet, things like that. Um, there is a significant screening of the mothers to make sure they are good candidates. There's a consent form. Um, the yield is much higher with a scheduled C-section as opposed to a, a natural childbirth, and it's much more sterile. So those are the reasons why. Now, what are we looking to prevent? Well, we're looking to prevent communicable diseases and any types of bacteria and other pathogens. On the right here is a sample analysis certificate looking at what the third-party uh, lab tests for. Uh, Lyme, hepatitis, CMV, HIV, um, syphilis, West Nile, and this shows the um, analysis before COVID. We do test for COVID as well. All right, one of the key points is that the safety at our centers in Mexico, the lab, is equitable to FDA standards, so therefore it's a non-factor at our centers when you're trying to think of, is it safe or is it not for the actual treatment? Not only are we COFR certified, but we follow all of the FDA guidelines, which assures the highest quality assurance. In addition, our center in Tijuana is part of an ambulatory surgery center, which is also accredited, and Cancun is actually part of a hospital accredited as well. Will an umbilical cord stem cell procedure or exosomes cause rejection? The answer is no. With 17,000 procedures performed worldwide, we've never seen a rejection reaction. These stem cells are immunologically privileged. They don't have MHC2 markers. They do not spark up an immune, immune response. Um, so from that aspect, no concerns. Do they cause tumors? Well, these are not embryonic stem cells. These are mesenchymal stem cells. Um, and they do not induce tumorigenesis, okay? So they don't cause or exacerbate tumors. There's many studies to show that, uh, so no concern there either. Will stem cell therapy in Mexico be a cure for my condition? The answer is no. Stem cells right now don't cure anything unless you're doing, a, you know, a myeloablation procedure and, um, you know, ablating the immune system. And that's a treatment for some types of cancers or whatnot. We're not talking about that. We're talking about kidney disease, lung disease, arthritis. If anyone tells you they can cure your condition, then it's just not true. You know, they're uh, hyperbolizing what they can do. Uh, the better term is mitigation. So we've developed the IntelliCell, um, which is short for intelligence cell, and that's what we use in Mexico. It took a long time to do that because we wanted to make sure that the patients are receiving the absolute best 
stem cell biologic possible. And these are cells that are specifically selected to produce the best results. Um, we look at mesenchymal stem cells that have shown to be very pure. We use specific markers to make sure that there's lots of mesenchymal stem cells. We want to make sure they're very potent, so we go less than the third generation of, of culturing. Uh, viability, we don't use preservative, so the viability is 95, you know, often 98 percent. So you really do get what you need. And colony forming units. We make sure that these stem cells produce colony forming units. That's an indicator of just how active those stem cells are. So not only are they present, they're potent, active, viable. Um, so on the right, you can see um, my synopsis. They seek out areas of inflammation and they deploy in the area needed to help repair and regenerate. They are able to differentiate into many different cell types. They're not pluripotent, so it's not you know like an embryonic stem cell where they can turn into absolutely anything. But that is you know truly not what we need. We need them to be able to turn into a lot of different cell types, um, not just not everything. Persuasion, they're very active in cell-to-cell -cell signaling to turn on repair and regeneration processes. They promote processes that we want and need, such as new blood flow, new cells to form, um, and then they do shut off the uh, possibility of tumor formation. So they're great from start to finish. Do the numbers of stem cells matter for treatment, or is that a myth? The answer is yes, they absolutely matter. The latest data on conditions shows that to a point, higher numbers are better. So, for instance, in the United States, it's very difficult to achieve high stem cell numbers. In Mexico, not so difficult. You know, with our uh, bioreactor and the culturing methods that we use, it's very stable, consistent. We can get high cell counts without having to charge patients, you know, a fortune. We um, have about 20 to 30 different protocols now, um, and most of those use 1 to 5 million stem cells per kilogram. So if you think about it, let's say you're 80 kilograms, which is around 200 pounds, um, and you want to get 2 million stem cells per kilogram, that's 160 million cells. You know, to do that in the USA is going to be very, very expensive. But in uh, Mexico, we can do that for, um, uh, I'm not sure, I'll show you at the end slide, I have the pricing. Um, our educated guess, based on research and our experience, is that if you give more than 100 million stem cells at a time, that's not a great idea. It can cause significant side effects for patients. It can uh, be a situation where the body can't use all those at one time. So we do break up the treatments accordingly, uh, depending on how many the patient needs. Um, now, what are the conditions that we're treating? Well, there's a lot. There's over 50. It's actually closer to 70. But I'm just going to mention the categories mostly here so that you have an idea. Uh, well, specifically, we do treat um, autism spectrum disorder as well as CP. The results have been absolutely fantastic for these individuals, the parents and the children. Uh, very exciting. A lot of families bring their children down once or twice a year to get treatment because the results continue to improve. Neurodegenerative category includes uh, post-stroke, um, ALS, MS, um, you know, lots of different issues underneath that category uh, do great. Um, orthopedic would be, you know, arthritis or ankylosing spondylitis or things like that. Pulmonary would be, say, post-COVID or uh, COPD, fibrosis. All types of autoimmune conditions. Actually, diabetes is an autoimmune condition. It works well for that. Psoriasis, RA, lupus. Um, you know, I'll put Lyme disease under there. It's not really an autoimmune condition, but you know, I thought I'd mention it because it works great. And fibromyalgia. Urologic would be things like erectile dysfunction. It's one of the most common reasons people come for treatment. It works amazingly well um, for that, as well as overflow incontinence in females. Diabetes, there's good research on type 1 and type 2. Um, all this information is on our website and we have a lot of uh, brochures for download as well. Ophthalmologic, um, first off we don't do any injections into the eye. So if you really want an injection into the eye, we would not be the clinic for you. But 
the eye is very vascular. So we do IV, we do intrathecal, um, and we get, do get a substantial amount of stem cells that can help with things like macular degeneration. And then organ failure, such as kidney, heart, liver, um, I'll mention lung again, you know, pancreas for, for diabetes or pancreatitis. It works really, really well. What kind of outcome can I expect and for how long? This is a truly loaded question. Patients are different. Their conditions are different. What types of conditions they have at the same time and the severity, you know. So overall, if you put all of our cases together, we do have an 85% patient satisfaction rate. It's much better than a Band-Aid treatment like a steroid injection or narcotics. Typically, patients do get over a year, sometimes up to like five or six years. Uh, but for something like rheumatoid or diabetes or whatnot, it's usually two to three years. Some conditions are going to need repeat treatments every six months. Um, ALS and MS do better with treatment every six months, maybe 12 months. It's not a one and done procedure. So co being cost effective is very important. That's one of the reasons we have, I have, uh, pushed us to be the most cost effective stem cell therapy centers in the world. What are the risks? Well, to date, these have been very safe procedures. We've never seen a rejection reaction. Uh, there's a rare risk of disease transmission. We've never seen that. There's a very low risk of infection. We've never seen a deep infection. We have seen it with other centers in the industry. Um, and whether that's due to the stem cell biologic, most likely it's not. Most likely it was due to technique. But at our centers, we just haven't seen that. The, what, what does happen? Well, usually it's mild to moderate side effects, such as low-grade fever, dizziness, lightheadedness, maybe some chills and nausea, typically resolves within 24 to 48 hours. Why should you consider R3 for your regenerative care in Mexico? We have a very high patient satisfaction rate. When you look at our referrals and the patients coming in, 35% of all of our patients come from referrals of existing, you know, previous patients. And a lot of that is due to our ex excellent outcomes and safety. Um, we do get a lot of repeat patients as well. They do well for a year. They want to come back either because they just want to get more improvements or it's starting to slowly um, diminish. Uh, we've made the experience as VIP as possible. We do give VIP escort transportation from the airport or your hotel in San Diego. It's literally 20 minutes from the San Diego airport. Um, I did a video. It's on our website, stemcelltreatmentclinic.com. With Dr. Ramon, where you know he picked me up from the airport, and we filmed it during the um, during the uh, trip down there, uh, including the border. And it was literally 20 minutes. It's in a nice area of Tijuana. You hear about the nightclubs and all that. No, we're on the totally other side, on the business zone, Rio Zona. It actually looks like San Diego, except for the signs being in Spanish. Um, our experience was uh, another reason to consider. We've been doing this for quite a while. We have customized options for patients. Um, it's not just a calculation. It's also, you know, goes into uh, looking at your unique um, situation with what disease you have or what disease is. Uh, we've done over 17,000 procedures now in the last 10 years. Um, we have a great safety history, and we've developed the IntelliCell to improve upon um, these results. Dr. Ramon de la Puerta is our medical director. He has been since we started in Mexico. Overall, he's got two decades of clinical, clinical experience. We work together to improve and develop over 20 customized protocols for patient outcomes. So how do we come up with our pricing? Well, what you see here is a Mercedes, and we wanted to offer the Mercedes a treatment for the price of, you know, a Ford or a Chevy or something that um, is a lot less expensive. So uh, with our economy of scale, because we do so many procedures around the world, that is exactly what we did. All those savings we pass through to patients. People ask us sometimes, well, how can you keep these prices? You know, when they when I look at Panama and the treatment was going to cost me 30000 with you it was only ten or twelve. Well, that's been our mission, to make effective stem cell therapy available to virtually everyone in need. So we do this in uh, Mexico. We do this in Pakistan, the Philippines. Um, 
upcoming in you know Australia and Brazil. The model stays the same. We do not want anyone uh, to suffer financially too much because of these treatments, especially when it's not a one and done. The only extra fees we um, put in there are for uh, sedation or intrathecal because we need to uh, bring in an anesthesiologist. Um, and spine right along with that. And if there's extra days, it's not a lot, it's like $200 uh, for the extra clinic fee, but we have, do have to pay you know, our nurse uh, to be there. So these procedures, this is a picture from our, our Tijuana. Um, we now have a, a special wing at the surgery center for our patients, um, either in Tijuana or Cancun. Mexico City is on the horizon. The process starts with a free phone consultation. It's not going to cost you anything. We'll take a look at your medical records and talk to you about your options. A uh, patient concierge representative will assist you with all your travel logistics. We can help you with the airfare and the lodging. That, that's your uh, fee responsibility. But we'll take care of the transportation to and from the uh, airport. Uh, so what are the advantages? Our outcomes are fantastic. Our safety is unparalleled. Cell counts very high with a 95-98% viability. The IntelliCell is the intelligent cell and that's what we use for our treatments. Anybody over 50 million stem cells gets free exosomes. And our pricing, let's look at the pricing. For 30 million stem cells it's only $2,950. All right. Um, 50 million stem cells is only an extra thousand, and those patients also get free exosomes. 100 million is 7250. 200 million stem cells is only $12,250. Patient came to us recently who had a um, quotation from Panama. Uh, they were supposed to get 150 million stem cells for $29,000. Uh, 150 at our center is going to cost right around 10. So I mean, literally, it's a third of what other centers are offering internationally. Um, and we even have a billion stem cell program that's just under $30,000. So for a billion cells, if you need that, um, you know, you can stay with us for seven to 10 days. We'll, we'll do this, you know, either every day or every other day. It might take two weeks. Um, and it's an amazing opportunity for patients. So most clinics in Mexico that we you know compete with they offer stem cells that are either uh, frozen and preservative that kills cells and can cause an allergic reaction they're over cultured they don't limit it to the third generation like we do um, and as a result of that or they're more, much more expensive it's just not nearly as effective they also don't use the one-two punch with the stem cells and the exosomes um, and they don't understand when to use intrathecal um, intranasal, nebulizer, things like that. So for 10 years now, we've been uh, featured routinely on all types of media channels. Um, if you tell the patient concierge representative that you watched this uh, video, uh, you'll get $250 off your treatment. Uh, we just can't combine that with any other offers, all right? Call us today. It's a U.S. number. It's 888-988-0515. Visit us online at stemcelltreatmentclinic.com. Tons of educational info on there, brochures you can download, um, videos of, um, well, pretty much me talking about topics. We have a lot of testimonials on there, too. All right. So um, we get patients coming in from all of the United States, um, Mexico, Canada, um, South America, and a lot from uh, Europe, and that's picking up now that, that COVID restrictions are lessening. Uh, but yeah, what I'm getting at is that patients come in from all over the world because of the quality and effectiveness of the treatment. Well, thank you very much for watching, everyone.